How's it going? I am Trent from Special Stream Cannon, and we are about to play the last episode of Dream Daddy. That's right. This is the episode. This is the time, guys. Our boy Jay, he's gonna make that choice. Who is gonna be his Dream Daddy? Now, those of you who haven't been around for all of the episodes yet, you're in for a little bit of a treat. Those of you who have, well done. I love you. I mean, I love all of you. I love everybody who shows up to these things. Sorry, I'm just checking my microphone levels real quick. I'm not so good at doing this before streams because, well, I'm quite bad at uh, testing this equipment and everything. Microphone sounds good. Uh, mute that son of a bitch. And now we are good to go. Let's get ourselves some Dream Daddy on. Now, just so you guys know, I am currently in chat. So if you have any questions, I always like getting a little bit of uh, discussion going during these streams. It just makes life so much more fun. Now, we've got enough time. To do a couple things. Welcome. You've got dads. Now we've done two dates with all these dads, so we can't go on another date unless we decide who we're gonna date, who we're gonna, who's gonna be our dream daddy. However, we actually have enough time today. Just a little bit of time, just a little bit, just a smidge. To go on a date with one of these guys. Now I don't know anything about either of them. Um. But Joseph, to me, sounds like he's got a really funny, well, not funny, a tragic is probably the right word, <laughs> a story in that, he, you know, he's clearly with a woman who, who's going out all the town. I don't know if Joseph's gay. I don't know if he's bisexual. I don't know if he just, you know, got married, had kids and all that kind of stuff and just never really uh, let himself express that side of him. Maybe he's been bearing. I don't know. Maybe he's repressed gay. I don't know. Well, I kind of want to find out. So, Ma voted Maple Bay's number one youth minister for five years running. He's probably, it's probably a joke that he's the only youth minister. Living in my hometown with my beautiful wife, who cheats on me, and our four amazing kids, who creep me out. If I'm not in the church, you can catch me in the open water, setting sail on the seas of adventure. Actually, that sounds pretty nice. I love playing guitar and crushing my kids at Candyland. Fuck you, kids. Learn to play. On a Friday night, you were most likely to lead the community in a fun mixer. If you had one thing to take in, on, onto a desert island, what would it be? My six string. Huh. I didn't think he'd be a uh, guitar player. What are your turns on? My loving wife. I'm going to call bullshit on that one, guys. Uh, we'll re uh, You know, I've lost interest in the rest of those. I don't have a huge amount of time. I just really want to finish this because really what I want to do is I want to start a new game. Uh, I feel like I've dragged a little bit doing this. and uh, I kind of want to go on to something a little bit new and exciting. Uh, I've got a couple games in mind. Um, I'll put a poll out on Twitter uh, so any of you guys following me on Twitter can check that out uh, and let me know what you prefer. Here we go. Let's go on a date with Joseph. His family's a little weird, but Joseph seems cool. I should take him up on his offer to hang out. Wait, how do I hang out with a priest? I don't go to church. Should I be Jesus-y? I imagine Joseph's family staring at me as I fumble through some sort of G some sort of prayer attempt. Maybe not too Jesus-y. A smatter, a light smattering of Jesus, which is the appropriate amount of Jesus in your life. Will he want me to pray? Is he gonna pray at me? Do I have to pray at him? Talking to Joseph, huh? Gah! Ah. Gah! Amanda, how many times have I told you not to sneak up on me like that? I have a delicate heart. I se selectively ignore it every time you do, pops. You smug bitch. Amanda looks over my shoulder at the screen. Joseph can't read your mind, you know. If you want to talk, just message him. But I've never been friends with a priest before. What do I talk about? My favorite Bible passages? My ice cream socials? Khakis? I'm just gonna move this a little closer. Yeah. yeah. 
First of all, he's a youth minister with a tattoo, not a priest. That's important. There's a difference of some kind! Aww. You're overthinking, Dad. Listen, just put it like this. <sighs> Hello, neighbor. Thanks again for the invite to the barbecue. I'd love to hang out with you soon, if you're not too busy. Isn't that a little too business casual? Huh. Fine, fine. Give me the keyboard. I got this. Huh. Amanda focuses on the keys. Hi, Joseph. It was great meeting you and your family. I'm still new around here, so if you'd like to, if you'd like, I'd love to hang out and get to know you. See ya. See ya. The smiley is a nice touch. I wouldn't have thought of that. Almost immediately, I received a response. What do you say? Hi, Jay. If you're not doing anything in a bit, the kids and I are baking treats for the church bake sale today, and we'd love to have you over. It'll be a blast, so let me know, Joseph. He uses a lot of exclamation points. I'm more concerned about him signing his name with a tilde. I'm willing to let it slide this time, but only this time! Next time he dies! I respond back. Sounds like fun! Tilda! Jay! Well I Well, I guess I'm doing this! Both the date and the tilde! Tilda or tilde? I think it's tilde. Promise you won't sneak up on me anymore! Amanda stares at me. I'm blinking. I don't make promises I can't keep. Real to a fault, pops. Yo. And dad? Please don't be weird about the religion thing. I can't help it! Religion freaks me out! Me? Weird! Never! It would never happen! Make a short walk over to Joseph's place. Don't be weird, Jay. Don't be weird. Don't be weird. Don't be... That's actually what I say to myself before every single social encounter I have. Don't be weird. Don't be weird. Don't be weird. Don't be weird. What if they hang up a bunch of, cro bunch of... What if they hang up a bunch of crosses? Or collect those little porcelain babies? What if they're all praying? Do I pray before... Do they pray before dinner? During dinner? Over porcelain babies? The door begins to creak open. A shadowy figure obscured on the other side. Who's there? Ah! Jay! Jay Hawk! The door opens the rest of the way. It's Joseph Zeldis. What's his name? Hey. Hey! Uh, you? Um, oh, it's not Krish, because that's not a real name. I'm going to say Christian? It's Chris. Oh, Chris, right! Again, hi again! It's, uh, I'm Jay, and you weren't important enough for me to remember your name. I know what your name is. Oh yeah, we met at the barbecue. How's the uh the blonde thing treating you? It's treating me great. If you ever want to grow up to be an amazing gay dad, blonde is the way to go. Please don't say it. Jesus Crisping slowly. Maybe you didn't hear that. You're weird. I can't help it! Is your dad Jesus! Before I finish, Chris walks into the adjacent room, leaving me in the front of the doorway. Home! This is a great first impression. I'm doing well, guys! For a moment, I wonder if I should just go in, further subjecting Joseph's family to my winning attitude and my artful charisma. Mercifully, Joseph... Joseph, he peeks... Oh, that's a typo. Joseph peeks his head around the corner. Jay, you made it! Joseph approaches me with arms wide. I'm so glad you could come by. Are you ready to bake? I'm always ready to bake, baby. Wait, you're talking literally. I am not! I'm as ready as I'll ever be! <laughs> That's the kind of semi-confidence I like to see in a baking assistant. Come on in! Hey. Joseph leads me to a bright, spacious home full of nautical knickknacks. This isn't what I imagined at all. It's actually pretty charming. Hi. I believe you've met Chris, who left you outside like a dog. Uh. Chris? Hmm? hmm? Are you going to apologize? Oh, right. Sorry. 
Try to make eye contact with Chris, but he keeps looking away. He must be really shy. It's all right. Next time, just be a little more inviting to our guests, okay? Sure. Chris seems to relish in the chance to escape the conversation and quickly vanishes into his room. Joseph turns to me apologetically. Don't take it personally. Chris likes to keep to himself. I mean, we didn't start off on the best foot. Plus, being the eldest in a big family can't be easy. <laughs> we try to cut him a little slack where we can. Here. Ah, here are the twins. Christian and Christy. Say hello to Jay. Hello, father. Hello, Jay. Uh -huh. Kids, come on. Dial it back on the creepy twin stick. Creepy twin stick? I must egg them on. Could you two say, come play with us, Danny? Forever and ever and ever. Oh, oh no. The twins stare up in unblinking unison. Come play with us, Danny. Oh. Joseph covers his mouth and looks away. Ha ha, I got those hearts. But he's clearly holding back a big laugh. This is it. This is my dad world series. Okay, now say, please help us, Mothra. Please, please help us, Mothra. Mm. No, I can't take it. Just to be trying his best not to break in front of his kids, the twins seem to be catching on and look eager to bust their dad. Can we keep it up? Go with something creepy. Now say, they, now say, they all float down here. Sorry, I got my voices mixed up a little bit there. They all float, float down here, father. <laughs> Joseph can't take it anymore, despite his quiet uh, protestations. He's laughing pretty hard into his hand, and the kids giggle with him. Ha <laughs> ha! Oh, I don't know why they know that. Twins, obviously pleased with the new spooky arsenal of weapons. Leave the room to terrorize the rest of the community. My work here is done. Huh. I'm going to be hearing those lines for weeks. Next time we hang out, I'll teach them some lines from the thing. Oh. All right, so it looks like we've got a bit of a troublemaker on our hands. You think you can trouble a career pro? You can out trouble a career pro? I don't know about that. Oh, I'm suddenly in interrupted by a loud crash from the kitchen. Jesus Christ, what now? Mm. That doesn't sound good, Christy. No one responds. Joseph furs, furrows his brow and motions for me to stay where I am. Wait here a minute. Joseph rushes into the kitchen. I remember this with Amanda. Half of fatherhood is trying to keep your kids from finding creative ways to kill themselves. And he's got four. Talk about worry. Well, he should have kept it in his pants. Or in his wife's pants? I don't know. Out of his wife's pants. I take a seat on the surpri surprisingly pristine couch and twiddle my thumbs. Uh, or examine the floor. Well, you have this many kids, and they're bound to end up, and things are bound to end up on the floor, no matter how many times you try to keep it clean. I spot a ter terrifying cloth doll that appears to have both its arms pulled off several times. It's been stitched back together a lot. Tag says, C and C, because of course it does. Because remember what they did? Do you remember what they did to the little armadillo? Was it an armadillo? No, it's a capybara. It was Arnold the capybara. Those bitches. I set that down and spot a houseplant. Hey, little guy. Keep being you, tiny houseplants. One last thing. I spot one last thing on the floor. It's a silver necklace. Wow, this looks expensive for something casually tossed on the floor. If there's a story here, it's none of my business. Oh, shit. Uh, let's go ahead and head into the, uh, into the kitchen. It's been a while. I guess you should go into the kitchen and see what's what. Hmm. What is what? Go into the kitchen and find Joseph holding Christy in one arm. She seems a lot calmer than she was a minute ago. I raise an eyebrow at Joseph. Oh. The twins are a lot more manageable when they're separated. Where's Christian? Oh. He ran off. Christy dips a spoon into the brownie batter and gives it a taste. Dad, it's too sweet. <laughs> You're too sweet. Oh. No, I'm not. I'm evil. <laughs> I'm going to kill you all. You're so sweet, we might have to water you down with spiders. No, not spiders. 
Joseph begins tickling Christy with his free hand. Between laughing and squirming, I don't know how he's got a hold of her. But the girl's locked in place. The man is a professional child wrangler, and that's probably going to go on his police record. Christy fixes me with her best puppy dog eyes. Save me from the spiders! Um, oh, renegade option. Uh, but I want to... Dual spider, spoon noodle spider king. I don't know. I don't know. I grab a wooden spoon and point it in Joseph's direction. Unhand her, foul beast! Okay, Jay the Valiant, let's see what you've got. You may have defeated me at Tarantula Ridge, but now I have the upper hand! Joseph gently puts Christy down behind him. Have you come to squash me, knight? Or have you merely fallen into my web? I'm no mere fly, Spider King! Now on guard, eh? I know how to pronounce on guard. I just like to say on guard, eh? It sounds funny to me. I, I'm just a simple man with simple tastes and simple jokes. For a minute or so, Joseph and I mock duel with the two dumbest looking spoons in the room. Eventually, I strike a killing blow in the invisible heart between his arm and his body. And Joseph recoils in horror. Oh, Blast! I am defeated! You could never best me, Spider King, for I have the power of... Let's uh. take a taste of the brownie batter. The magic! Oh man, that is way too sweet! Hey. Joseph, or Christy, begins jumping up and down excitedly. My hero! Christy hugs my leg before making a surprisingly fast exit. There's just like a dust cloud, a Christie-shaped dust cloud in the corner now. Yeah. Hey, wait! Do you want to bring brown? Do you want to bake brownies with us? Christy hesitates, then shakes her head no again. Sparkle pony. <laughs> Sparkle. Sparkle pony. Just looks confused. Uh. You don't want to bake with Dad now? You want to play with Sparkle pony? Yes. <sighs> okay, go. Before Joseph can even finish his sentence, Christy is out the door and down the hall. Ahead. Uh. Joseph sighs deeply as he stares into the chocolate batter. He tastes it again, his face twisting. Oh. <laughs> and that is still way too sweet. So what made that crash? Hey. Hank readers on the linoleum floor. You just can't trust them. It's my new techno single. Still haven't thought of a B-side. Now we're both looking into the batter. It's got a sickly sheen of sugar and chocolate candies throughout. And I have a feeling Christy had something to do with it. The little sabotaging bitch. Hey. We need a fresh start. Oh, uh, yeah, like I said, I'm not really a baker, but, uh... <laughs> don't even sweat it. The bag came with instructions that have mysteriously vanished along with my daughter. So, we'll probably be fine. Probably! Excellent. Yeah, probably. He certainly looks confident. And that's the important thing. Alright, Jay. You've baked a cake from a box before. Once. How hard could this be? <laughs> now grab a spoon and get ready to rock! Mario Batali, save me. Joseph and I set to work, cracking the eggs and mixing the things, and then pouring the things according to how we assumed the back of the box would tell us. Things go according to plan, and soon enough we have a solid batch of brownies. Hooray! <sighs> hey. Woo. Wait. Joseph has a little dot of batter on his nose. Mm. Wow, wow, Jay! Way to use those dance skills! Oh, I bet you've baked a few box mixes in your time? Uh, I've mixed a few boxes. Hey, no, I haven't. His nose. Joseph! Oh. All we have to do is bring these to the bake sale and voila! Duty done! Ahem! Mm. Now help me and Christy. Now help me and Christy. Keep your eye out for a pony that sparkles. Help me find Christy, yes. 
Now, this guy apparently has some brownie batter on his nose, and all I can think is, if I've got something like that on my nose, I can goddamn feel it. It does not surprise me. Joseph, hold still! Hmm. What? Thumb in position, and got it! Okay. Joseph's eyes go wide as I gently wipe the chocolate off of his nose. Is he... blushing? Ugh. Oh, uh, th thanks. That was uh, incredibly embarrassing. No problem! In less than a second, I've licked the batter off my finger. At least he didn't lick the batter off of his nose. It's really good batter. We, uh... We should find Christy before this gets weird. Hmm. Yes, 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 we should do that. Thing, Jay. We should do the thing, Jay. Joseph quickly composes himself. <laughs> All right, she can't be far. You take the delta position, I'll watch your sinks. Do you even know what that means? Wink. Alpha Tango's... Alpha, Alpha Tango Sparkle. Roger, Roger. Joseph starts making um, his way down the hall and calls back to me. Take the brownies and the rest of the baked stuff I baked earlier today while I get Christy. We'll meet you by the car. Oh. Joseph, Christy, and I arrive at the church parking lot to find fold-out tables and pop-up tents all ready to set up. Looks like the bake sale is underway in full. Oh. Wow, this place is packed. Is this packed? There are a few people milling around. Must be a value pack. Eh, I see what they did there. If you can count the city's population on your fingers and toes, this counts as packed. Point! Point has been taken! Christy rockets out of the car and into the lot. Is she running on jet fuel? I want to sell brownies! Yeah. Okay, okay, let's get set up. I want to see Mom! Hi. She's down by the other row of tables, helping with another group. Want to go over there and tell her I said hi? Mom! Christy zips off immediately. Joseph seems unconcerned. Does she always run that fast? <laughs> yeah, and I can only catch her half the time. These knees aren't what they used to be. That's unfortunate because you're going to need those knees. I remember when Amanda was her age. I couldn't get her to sit still for five minutes. Not without NyQuil. Mm -hmm. Yep, great age to deal with. Yeah. While Christy's gone, Joseph and I arrange all of our baked goods on the table and settle in. So, are we allowed to eat any of our own goods? Oh. Look, if I don't see nothing, I don't say nothing. The man upstairs has strong feelings about snitches. Pretty sure he doesn't. Pretty sure he doesn't. Does he actually? Hey. Joseph shrugs. He eats a brownie. It looks like some of the other stalls are selling drinks, little handmade crafts, and other sweets. Aww. Whoa, someone brought a soft serve ice, serve ice cream machine. I gesture to it. How are we supposed to compete with that? We have these shitty brownies. Oh. Please, this isn't my first time to the rodeo. The bake sale rodeo. Dot, dot, dot. Hmm. There's actually no rodeo here. It's just a bake sale. Oh. I think you and I put together one pretty... I think you and I, to get put together, can make one pretty convincing argument for these brownies. Don't you? Um... Oh yeah! We high five. Dad five. If you bake it, if you bake it, they will come! It's not long before we have our first customers. Hey, it's Matt! Sexy, sexy Matt. Hey. Hey, hey dude. Hiya! Matt! Come and, eat, come and see ta. Great to see you guys out here. Oh. Happy to support a good cause. Plus you know as the owner and proprietor of the Coffee Spoon. Established that specializes in baked goods. I have to scope out the competition, baby. Just leans close to me. Mm. This guy knows his stuff. Stay on your toes. Mm. So, what recipe did you use for the brownies? Don't say use the raw box recipe. Don't say use the box recipe. Uh, I just let the baking spirit move through me, you know? A little bit of flour here, a pinch of salt there! It's like an interpretive dance, but with cookie and calories. <laughs> interpretive cooking, yes. You can never make the same thing twice. Every batch is special. There will never be another batch of brownies with this exact flavor sensation that these have right here. God damn it, buy the fucking brownies! 
It's a once in a lifetime opportunity, man. Hey. All right, all right. We'll take two. Actually, we'll take three. I ring them up and high five Joseph as our happy customers walk away. <laughs> See? Not so hard. Yeah, I'm hot off the good feelings from the last sale. Who's next? We sell brownies to a bunch of people I don't recognize, but who clearly know Joseph. Eventually, another family familiar face pops up. Jay! It's Brian. Uh. Sexy, sexy Brian. Close enough! Oh. Can we interest you two in any of our fine sweets and treats? You sure can! I bet I could eat ten brownies. Must resist! Urge to be competitive! I, I bet I could eat 11 brownies. They used to call me Brian Hollowlegs Harding back when I was in the competitive circuit. Think you could go brownie for brownie with me? <laughs> Must resist. Both brownies. Let's save the threats of a competitive eating for another time, shall we? Brian and I stare each other down. Ha, right. huh, you're right. Let's just take one for myself and one for Daisy here. Oh. Coming right up. You excited for group movie night? Youth group movie night, Daisy? Yeah, what's the movie? It's a surprise. Joseph leans over to me. Oh. It's the Fast and the Furious. That doesn't seem like a kid's movie. Really? Right. If you think about it, there's some heavy religious undertones. Just hands it back into Daisy. <laughs> I made sure to give you guys the edges. Clearly, clearly superior part of brownie topo topography. Thanks, Joseph. Our two customers walk away with walk off their purchases. Joseph and I survey our stock. Oh. These are selling pretty hot. At this rate, we'll have enough money to pay for a new paint job on the church pews in no time. Wait, what happened to the pews? Oh. Ernest sprayed, Ernest spray painted his rapper alias onto them. Young Steinbeck. I would have gone for Young Man and the Sea, but I can respect that. That's actually pretty. Both of those are not bad. Speaking in minstrel terms, Ernest is hard to reach. In father terms, Ernest is kind of a turd. Being cool, being a cool youth minister seems like a lot of work. Oh. It is, but it's worth it. Hmm. Although sometimes I wish hmm. I could be wasted away. Never mind. What? It's kind of silly, but... <laughs> Do you ever wish you could just drop everything and go lounge around on a beach somewhere in the tropics? Drink fruity blended beverages, fall asleep on a hammock, you know, basically live out a Jimmy Buffett song. Okay, I see where you're getting at this. We're gonna run away together. We're gonna elope. Joseph! I think it about this every single day of my life. I mean, I'm unemployed, so I basically do that already? My dream is to live in Margaritaville. Oh. One day, my friend. One day we'll be on island time. We make a couple more sales to some church patrons. Everything seems to be going smoothly. Off in the distance, I spot my old buddy Craig. Oh, sexy, sexy Craig! Oh. Craig! He's gonna be a hard sell. Craig's a fitness man. I think he comes to these bake sales to test himself. To see if he has the resolve to refuse processed sugar. Uh. Are you sure you're ready for this? We go way back. I got this. Oh. Craig jogs up to our table with Briar and Hazel in tow. They're each finishing an ice cream cone, so it's unlikely we're going to sell them on brownies too. Shit. Probably won't be able to sell the, sell the baby. She's impossible to read. Because she can't read. It all comes down to Craig. Oh. Hey, bros. Hi, Uncle Joseph. Hi, Amanda's dad. <laughs> Would you be interested in one of our delicious homemade brownies? Oh. Hmm. I don't know. Um, hey. Hey, Craig! When we were freshmen, remember how our next door neighbors pranked us by switching our laundry detergent with dish soap? And how the washing machine exploded with suds? And then we decided to go get them back by breaking brownies for them, but sprinkling high intensity hot sauce into the mix, and then we watched them cry after eating it? Heh. <laughs> I would feel bad, but we had to clean up the laundry ourselves. Anyway, these brownies are like that, but without the hot sauce. Maybe you should get one more. For old time's sake. Oh. 
Craig thinks for a second. Hmm. Well, the girls just want a game. Huh? You know what? We'll take one for each of us. Hey. Even River? Oh. <laughs> I'll eat hers. Oh, eggplants! You've got yourself a deal. Day winds down and we're pretty much out of items to sell. Everyone starts packing up. Christy eventually comes back and immediately falls asleep in Joseph's folding chair. Boxed mix, huh? I'm guessing that's his wife. Come on. Mary saunters up to us. She looks like she'd rather be anywhere else but here. Oh. Oh, hi, honey. Yep, they're selling like hotcakes, which is actually, they're just brownies. Cute. <laughs> and boring. And safe. God damn, woman's uh, just dial back that open hostility a little bit. Jesus. Um, hey, Mary. Mary's eyes dart over to me. Uh, what's the what's the rookie doing here? Uh, I was just hoping to introduce Jay to the rest of the community. Uh, uh huh. You get a load of this freak show. What? Uh, Weird folk is all. Holier than thou types. Hmm. Don't you think, Jay? Uh, <laughs> Mary. Uh, let the kid answer the question. Um. Yeah, we are awkward. We're going to shove a brownie in my mouth and pretend I, I can't talk. Mouth is full. Nope, can't do it. Good, good thinking, Jay. Well done. <laughs> well, appetite, you got us out of another problem. This one's a keeper, huh? Uh, Mary, can we talk about this later? Come on. Oh, am I embarrassing you in front of your new friend? Joseph doesn't respond, trying his hardest to keep his cool. Oh. Can we please talk about this later? <laughs> sure thing, honey bear. Uh? Mary turns her attention to me. Hand over the cash. Um, Jeez, mm. I'm not trying to rob you. I'm in charge of the funds here. I hand over the cash we've made. It feels like a hefty wallet, if I may say so myself. I know, and I know a thing or two about hefty wallets. Mm. Thanks. Hey. I like how they have her, her, her image always looks like it should be holding a glass of wine. What? Hey. Give me your wallet. You think this church is going to fix itself? Oh. Mary. Uh? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Sorry. I work on the whole pretending to be happy thing. Mary leans in and whispers to me. Uh. He's really good at it. Mary walks off without saying goodbye. Jesus Christ, that was awkward. Um, um I'm really sorry about that. Uh, she likes pushing your buttons, huh? Hey. Joseph shrugs. Uh. No marriage is perfect. <laughs> you ready to head out? Joseph and I load the folding chairs into my car. Christy nods off the moment Joseph straps her into the car seat. Aye. I drop Joseph off in front of his house. A small yawn sneaks out of me. Looks like I tuckered you out, huh? I'm a sleepy dad. I think I might finally be crashing after all the sugar. Oh. Huh. <laughs> I won't keep you up then. <laughs> Thanks for helping me out today. Happy to do it. Also happy to eat brownies. Mostly the brownies. Oh. Well, next time I promise we'll do something a bit more exciting. A bit less free labor. And I'm very sorry about the whole Mary thing. You shouldn't have had to see that. It's fine, really. Uh. I don't know. I know, but first hang out domestic problems aren't a good look. You barely know me. Uh. Let me make it up to you. I won't be... It won't be Margaritaville, but we'll do something fun. I promise. I smile. I'd like that! Oh, oh and one last thing. Just toss a cling wrap brownie through the window. Hits me in the face, but I'm able to catch it. <laughs> it's the last one. You've earned it, young man. Joseph, please don't leave me alone with this brownie! Nope, too late. I'm already walking away. But, Joseph! Uh... Bye! <laughs> Joseph walks to his home. He waves at me before carrying Christy inside. Well, looks like it's just you and me, Brownie. I did promise to save this Brownie for my for my daughter, and I will do that. The pocket of the Brownie? This might come in handy down the road. Ah. I 
find I step inside to find Amanda doing her homework on the couch. Hey, Father Unit! Hello, child that I am required by law to care for! This sounds just like me and my father. How's homework? It's really fun and educational. Really? How long have you known me? Right! I'm guessing roughly all of your life! How was the bake sale? Good! I think I really could have made my life made a good life for myself as a brownie salesman instead of doing indeterminate job. I don't know what Jay does for a living. Glad to hear it. So? So what? Were there any extra brownies? Or did you maybe sneak one? Or... I think for a moment and realize I still have the brownie that Joseph gave me. So probably be better in someone else's stomach than mine. Heads up! Wait! I hurl the brownie towards Amanda. It hits the wall behind her and falls on the ground. Nice throw, jackass. She scoops it up and smiles at me. Yeah. Thanks, Pops. Huh. Hey, if you're not going to bed anytime soon, would you be game for some real shark hunters of Orange County? I thought the last hunter got eaten by a shark. Mm. He did. I sit down next to her and cozy up with a blanket. Aw. Awesome! Okay, let's see how we did. I'm guessing A rank. At least A rank. Let's do this. Come on. A rank, A rank. Come on. Come on. Do this. A rank! Hells yeah! Welcome. Okay. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and say we're gonna go bang crack. You know what they say about third dates? They get pretty serious. You sure this is your dream, Daddy? Yes, yes, I am so sure it hurts. Spend less money than you make. Excellent advice. Also very impractical in today's market. Took some time for our schedules to line up, but I was finally able to find a weekend where Craig and I could go camping. He always stays so busy with work and the kids. It's good to know that we'll just be spending some extra time relaxing together in nature. Since our first run, I've managed to go on regular runs with Craig. I mostly do them because it's the only time we get to hang out. But the added benefit is that I've seen a lot of improvement in my health. I am I am a buff dad now! So to sit through my attic and find my old camping gear from college, Craig put me in charge of bringing the sleeping bags in the tent while he takes care of the food, so I double check to make sure everything is ready to go. Craig should be here any minute now. Amanda's going to be spending this weekend on a school trip in our, to our nation's capital. Where the fuck is she, do I live? She hasn't been away from home without me for longer than a day since she was 14. I hope she isn't feeling as nervous as I am. Seriously though, where where do I live? Because I just I'm just sitting there thinking. Um like I thought I was on the west coast, but if they're on the nation's capital that's on the east coast, that's a long trip. That's a long trip for a weekend. Hey Manda Panda! Manda's in the middle of sitting on top of her luggage in order to get it to finally zip. Good kid. Hey pups! Ready for your trip? Once I get this bad boy all zipped up, I'm good to go! How much did you pack? That seems a lot for two days. Oh, it's all my camera equipment. Lenses, tripod, flash, all that. Are you even going to have time to take pictures? I'll find a way. I need to get some good shots for my series on national monuments. Oh, what's the series about? Mm -hmm. It's one of those internet series where I reimagine Disney prince princesses as founding fathers. Interesting. Go on. What? Hmm. I'm kidding. Nobody likes those. I'm taking portraits of my friends. Oh, well, I'm gonna be in the woods. Out there in nature, you know, roughing it. Just me and Mother Nature. The old Madre de, de, de Trees. Are you gonna be alright on your own? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hells yeah. I'm not gonna have any signal out there. I won't be able to text or call you at all. Uh. Oh, it's alright. I'll be able to survive a couple days without constant updates on who just got voted off International Haunted House Hunters. Will you, though? That sounds like a great show. Well, I'll miss you. And for the record, Bradley was pushed down a flight of ornate stairs by a ghost. They were really beautiful stairs. I mean, they're not now, because they're covered in blood. Amanda finishes zipping up the big suitcase and lugs it to the next to the door of her bedroom. She turns around and gives me a big hug. Aww. Relax, Datron. I'm the big kid now. I can take care of myself. Besides, I gotta share a room with Mon Monica Sanders. 
and two mom chaperones. The most trouble I could possibly get into is falling asleep with a tub of ice cream on me. Oh, well, all right. Don't steal anything, okay? Since you asked nicely, fine. Promise. Please don't get a criminal record. Why do you still have your armband? Why are you still in pajamas? I step outside, hauling my bags behind me. Greg's already strapped some camping gear onto the top of my modest but stylish car. He me carrying my equipment and hurries over to take it from me. Uh, yeah, you're such a gentleman. I almost had a case of vapors there. Eggplant! Ne never fear, these muscles were made for picking up heavy things and putting them in other places. Remember, it's your weekend to relax. Take it easy, Jesus Christ, dude. Hmm. I guess I can't argue with that. Hmm. Everything good with Amanda? Yep, on her way to a school trip to Washington, D.C. What about your offspring? Hmm. Already at Smashless for the weekend. I'm ready to get my camp bomb, bro. I load the rest of my stuff into Craig's car and we get in. Oh no! What's wrong? I think I left my juicer plugged in. We gotta go back. Are you worried that someone's gonna break into your house and cold press some carrots? No, it's just I... Just try to relax, man. Let the juicer float away. Take all of your worries and blend them into good, pulpy vibes. Craig takes a deep breath. Do we have anything to listen to? Because I will sing you the song of my people. Uh, all I had in my place were a series of CDs that guide you through a thorough and intense calisthenics workout. Do you want to listen to those? Um, no. I'm just kidding. Craig hands me a thick case filled with CDs. Take your pick. I thumb through page after page of kids singing along CDs. Oh yeah, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. That takes me back. I will fucking kill you if you don't have real music in here. Keep going. I get to the end of the case and find, in the very last slot, a blank CD with Craig's handwriting on it. Ah, oh, DJ Cake Stands Mega Mix Volume 1! I made it just for the trip. I think you'll like it. Pop the CD into the car stereo and it's like I'm immediately transported to our old dorm. Hit after hit plays and soon enough we're both happily scream singing the lyrics to each song as we fly down the highway. DON'T STOP BELIEVING! Hold on to our feelings! That's this song was Carl's favorite! Carl the third roommate! You brought that dog home one night and I couldn't pry you two apart! We spent an entire semester fabricating a story about our foreign exchange student, roommate who had a really bad cough that sounded exactly like a dog's bark! And then we had a room inspection! The RA was so suspicious of us, but he could never prove anything. And Carl was just under a blanket. Bless that pup's courage under fire. Man, we did some dumb things back in college. There was flybys. We built out tunes to in, non in whatever non-existent key our voices register in. Soon enough, we're surrounded by lush trees and spectacular vistas. It's everything amazing that nature has to offer. I feel It feels good to be back out here. Real good. Push it real good. I'm going to be right back because I need to go stir my chili for tea. Om nom nom. Sorry about that, guys. My, uh, my wife would kill me if I did not have chili waiting for her when she gets home from London. We park our car at the entrance to a familiar trail and load up our gear on our backs. I'm thankful that I've been working on my health for the past couple of weeks. Otherwise, I'd be dreading hiking all the way up there and all the hiking that's about to happen. Nope, that's the wrong button. Craig looks intently at his phone. Everything all right? I... Yep, just had to fire off one last work email. 
Craig pockets the phone, and we start off the trail. It's relatively easy, but I know I would have been huffing and puffing at this point if it weren't for all the murder sprints. I look around me, taking the tall trees and animal chirps. Everything okay back there? There's uh, no reception out here, man. Oh yeah, being out in the middle of nowhere will do that. I recognize the look of anxiety on Craig's face. But what what if there's a problem? Uh, look, Craig, we all know that you really wanted to, if you really wanted, you could flex your calf muscles and fly out of here on the rocket ship all the way back to Maple Bay. You're going to be fine. We're going to be fine. This is our weekend, dude. Mm -hmm. Keep marching down the trail, but it seems like Craig is still worried. After a bit, he stops in his tracks. Oh. Maybe uh, we should go back. We could find another campground that gets good cell reception. Craig, seriously, what's wrong? Oh. I mean, I'm just really nervous. My dad instinct is kicking in, and my mind just keeps conjuring up all sorts of worst-case scenarios. What if something happens to the girls? I don't have signal. I would have no way of knowing. Let me tell you, that feeling never goes away, no matter how old your kids are. You just gotta remind yourself that they're in good hands. Craig doesn't say anything. I give him a reassuring punch on the shoulder. Try to remember why we came out here. The plan was to get away from it all and just focus on ourselves for this little trip. No cell phone service, no distractions, just two dads relaxing in the woods. Broke back mountain, yo. Craig looks me directly in the eyes. No distractions, no cell phone service, just two dads relaxing out in the woods. I should. We're going to we're going to have some fun. Craig and I get back to marching. It's not long. It's not too long of a hike before we get to the campsite. And we're both glad to see that we're the only people there. Mm. I can't believe you still have this tent. Found it in my attic and already checked it for holes. It's seen better days, sure, but I think we'll be able to survive. Dumped the bag of fabric and poles on the ground. We unfold the tent in the desired spot. I hand Craig the stakes. Mm. We still know how to do this, right? Of course we do! I smell a mini-game coming! We do not. Twenty minutes of struggling like people in a bad infomercial. We somehow managed to build an upright structure that closer resembles what a tent would look like if somebody asked to draw a picture of a tent with one eye shut. I wouldn't put this up against a storm, uh, up against a storm, but I think we'll be able to survive for the night. We set out a couple of chairs and our cooking equipment, admiring our handiwork. <laughs> Bro, look at us go. Look upon the kingdom we have built. Upon this rock we shall grill our meats and drink our beers. For we hold dominion over this land. Oh. Verily, and uh, look at the camping chairs. Which are we going to sit on? So, what's next on the camp stravaganza docket? Oh. Well, now that we have shelter settled, I think it's time we do some exploring. There's a waterfall a little bit way up there that I'm sure we could hike to. Let's get hiking! Craig and I venture into the woods. We amble along, taking our time to chat and admire the wildlife. Craig reaches out in an arm to stop. Dude! Does that look like what I think it looks like? I look over to where he's pointing. Oh my god, it does. That tree looks like a butt! <laughs> Can't get over how detailed it is. I examine the butt tree further. The contour is perfect. It even has back dimples. I thought we were going to have a great time camping. But this makes it even better. Craig holds back a snicker. I aspire to have every hike be as good as this one. I'm stickering to now, too. Let us analyze this tree further. Craig and I share a huge belly laugh at our awful jokes. Ha 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 ha, butts. I love butts. The best thing about this is there's no daughters here to tell us how bad our jokes are. We high five. We're going to hit the trail again. It's been a long time since we've been out here, but everything seems more or less familiar. We point out old landmarks that we remember back from our college days. Hmm. Check it out. There's a clearing up ahead. As we get closer, I hear water running. Cresting over a hill, Craig and I are greeted by a wide clearing surrounded by trees. In front of us is a beautiful waterfall spilling into a large body of water that runs into a river. I also gape with genuine beauty of this place we investigate. 
The old waterfall. Nice. It's gorgeous. Nature is so rad, yo. Peering further, we had an idea of how deep the pool is. Mm. Think we could uh, jump off like the old college days. Ha! Huh, this old dad is happy here on dry land. Mm -hmm. Looks like you could climb right up over there. We didn't even bring swim trunks. Hmm. What are you talking about? Craig immediately begins taking his clothes off. Holy shit. Oh, I thought he was going to be naked. I thought we were about to see dick, guys. I thought there was about to be a dick. Uh, We're going to look at Craig's butt. I can't help but sneak a peek. That, that is a good butt. Craig turns around suddenly. He catches me looking. I do a lot of glute workouts. Eggplant! I immediately turn away, oh. blushing. You coming or what? <laughs> oh, I'll be coming, don't you worry. Oh, uh, I don't know about this dude. He's already making his way over to the waterfall by the time I finish my sentence. When he realizes I'm not right behind him, he turns around and rolls his eyes. We lived, we lived together for years, and I've seen your ass more times than I can count. It's no big deal. Um, yeah, but back then, I didn't want to put things in your ass. Uh, who needs pants anyway? They're society's oppressors. Down with pants, down with the system. Oh. That's the spirit. I take off my shirt and drop it in a pile with Craig's clothes. I put on the rest of my clothes on the ground, feeling exposed. Craig and I climb to the top of the waterfall, making sure not to slip on any wet rocks. He reaches the peak before I do and offers me a hand getting up. At the top, we look over the cliff into the tiny lake. It seems so much higher up from this perspective. Craig has always been a, the daredevil. He pulled some stunts in college that I'm honestly still shocked he survived. I was always the one standing on the sidelines, watching and hoping I wouldn't bring him any of home in a gurney. Man, this could be dangerous! Craig looks me in the eyes. Oh. Don't think, just jump. Craig cannonballs off the waterfall and into the lake, creating a huge splash. I'm worried for a moment before he finally resurfaces from under the water. <laughs> Woohoo! He treads water and looks up at me. Oh. You coming or what? Don't think, just jump. Don't think, just jump. How are you supposed to not think? I'm pretty sure I'm, that's not physically possible. My toes grip the edge of the rock. The water looked so far away. Don't think, just... I run off the edge, trying my best cannonball. Somewhere in the middle, it turns into a really graceful belly flop. I hit the water with a loud slap. I resurface to find Greg, Craig giggling. Mm. I rate that belly flop a solid, solid 8 out of 10. Your form is lacking, but your heart was in the right place. I playfully spa splash water at Craig. Mm -hmm. Are you sure about that? What have I done? I have instigated Water World 3. Wait, no, Water War 3. That's the one. Oh. Splash him again. You've given me no choice. Craig splashes me in the face with a huge wave of water. You've awakened the beast in my pants. He launches another wave of water at me. Don't you put me in a corner here. Don't put a wild animal in a corner. Um. Dunk him. I lunge for Craig and manage to get him in an arm lock. Time for the finishing move. I summon all of my dad's strength to lift Craig out of the water. Hey. hey. I drop him down with a splash. Craig bounces back out of the water. Hey. My turn. Oh no, it seems like Craig was simply allowing me to pick him up and dunk him. He grapples with me with his clearly superior muscles. Jesus Christ, seriously, great cheese on those abs. I emerge from the water, devastated. Oh. You think I did all those pull-ups just so I could look good with my shirt off? Nah, bro. These are arm cannons. These arm cannons are dad launchers. Eggplant! I think we're going to get an S rank on this one. Craig does a playful flex for me. Damn! Craig, truce, please, I can't take any more. My penis can only get so erect. Craig thinks about it. Yeah, sure. We shake hands, there is peace. Man, that jump was some such an adrenaline rush. Oh. Not so scary now, huh? I'll race you to the top. We run all the way on, on slick rocks and cannibal off the waterfall again. What a rush. Good form on that one. Want to go again? You know it! The same energy we had in our youth, we climbed back up to the top of the waterfall. I'm brave enough to try a flip. 
which I'm sure looks incredibly graceful as I belly flop onto the water. Phew, man, this is fun. Got one more in you? I live for danger! Takes a little more time, but we get to the waterfall and both do our best running jumps into the water below. All right, I think that's my limit. We should get going back before it gets too dark. Yeah, you're probably right. We should probably head back. We put our clothes back on and notice they're soaking wet. Maybe a splash fight wasn't the best idea. That's okay, we'll get a fire going in no time. We can dry off and get some dinner going. Something wet, we hike back to the camp and unpack everything we need for dinner. He pulls out a couple steaks and some chopped potatoes in tinfoil. Nice. You ready for a feast? Hey man, take a seat. The Craig train is pulling into the relaxation station and I'm your conductor. Let me cook for you. Absolutely not. Cooking is the thing that relaxes me the most. I'll take it from here. Craig cooks now? I remember how his sophomore year diet consisted of microwavable mac and cheese, but not microwaved and have trouble believing the thing he just said. At least let me start the fire. Hmm. Damn it, I've wanted to start the fire my whole life. Sure, let me grab my matches. Craig reaches into his backpack. He rummages around in his bag, pulling things out and checking every pocket. Uh oh. Oh. I know I packed it. Craig checks another bag and still can't find it. My stomach crumbles. Now I'm more acutely aware of how cold and wet I am. We really need to get a fire started. Okay, well, it's not the end of the world. Oh. Gosh, I'm so stupid. I could have sworn I packed it. I'm sorry, dude. Don't be. We can figure this out. We can start a fire. We're smart, guys. I mean, how hard could it be? I've watched plenty of survival programs on TV. If a naked reality TV star can do it, so can we. We'll need some wood. I gesture to the trees around us. I don't know. There's no shortage of that. And some tinder. Oh. We can make that work. And then I think some ancient aliens are then supposed to come by and give us advanced technology or renovate our house. Depends on the show. Craig and I gather, gather a variety of wood, bark, and moss until we have all the materials we could conceptually make. A passing looking campfire. Mm -hmm. Just add fire, right? That's the fun part. The sun is just now setting and a cool breeze rustles through the leaves of the trees around us. We have to work quick. Mm. I've done this in the past. I know I can figure it out. Just give me a second. Any way I can help. Mm. Give me some moral support. Lift my spirits and we'll make this fire happen. Uh, I've never known a better Craig. In all my days, I can confidently say I've never known a Craig to be his better friend, father, or fire maker. Oh. Oh. Actually, now that I think about it, I knew a guy named Craig in high school who ended up getting a job with a professional pyrotechnics op operator. I suppose he must have been pretty good at starting fires, but I bet you're even better than that guy. Oh, oh. bro. So I guess that balanced out because we got some of the dark things. But you know what? We got the, the, the eggplants earlier. It's fine. Eventually, Craig is miraculously able to get something going. He plows on the embers and gently places the glowing moss at the base of the pit. Soon enough, we have a nice little fire going. Way to go, man. We're regular old outdoorsy fellas. Oh. Hooray for not dying. I take a seat on one of the lawn chairs Craig brought and cozy up to the fire, warming my hands. Mm. Relax, man. Take it easy. Let me handle dinner. I watch as Craig stokes the fire and sets up a makeshift grill for the steaks. After all that hiking and swimming and fire starting, I'm able to relax a bit. With the sound of crickets and the scent of steak filling the air, I actually feel pretty calm. Craig expertly sears two steaks in a pan. He's been heating upon the fire. Cracking thyme and crushed ginger over it while basting them both in butter. That sounds fucking amazing. I mean, I can't eat any of that, but it sounds amazing. Wow, didn't know he was actually good at cooking. The fanciest I ever saw him in college was when he started sprinkling the seasoning packet into dry ramen and eating it straight up. Ugh. When did this happen? You used to eat cereal every morning with beer instead of milk. Mm -hmm. I grew up, I guess. I think these are just about ready. Craig puts the, puts the steaks on a paper plate and sets them aside. I start to reach for one, but Craig smacks my hand away. Dude, let them rest. They'll be more flavorful that way. I patiently return to my seat, eyeing the steaks longingly from a distance. They smell incredible. Craig prepares a side salad for us. In the meantime, sprinkling feta cheese onto freshly chopped greens, he plates it up next to a gorgeous pile of roasted potatoes covered in olive oil and rosemary. 
Oh, I'm so hungry. Once it's all ready, we sit down by the fire and dig in. Oh. Everything tastes okay. I'm in heaven. This is like the second best thing I could have in my mouth right now. Mm -hmm. That's what I like to hear. Remember how for an entire semester we would eat burritos for breakfast, lunch, and dinner? Oh. It's so hard not to go back to that. Look at you now, man. You have kids, a great job, and now you cook like a vengeful wizard whose art nemesis is microwavable food. I'm really impressed by how much you've gotten your life together. <laughs> Craig laughs, but there's no humor in it. Glad you think that. Glance at Craig while he picks at his salad. He really grew out of his baby face, but there's something about his expression that makes him seem so much older than he is. Since the maturity he didn't have in college, he looks exhausted. You okay? Huh. Talk to Jay. Yeah. Come on, dude. I've known you for long enough to see when you're down. Oh, man. Ah, I'm tired, bro. I think I've been out here. I think being out here is making me realize just how drained I feel. You work really hard, Craig. It can't be easy. I don't know. I have to for my girls. I volunteer at their school. I cook healthy meals for them. I do everything I can to make sure they're safe and happy. When they're with their mom, I'm always working overtime so I can support them. And then you work out a lot so you can crush anyone who stands in their way. I don't know. That and I don't want to fall into my old habits. I need a good I need to set a good example for my girls. Everything I do is for them, and I wouldn't have it any other way. But it seems like it's bleeding you dry. Nice. If that's what it takes to raise them well, then it's worth it. Um, that seems like false logic. Craig, buddy, I know where you're coming from here. But you've got to take care of yourself, too. Hey. You're useless to them. If you don't have the energy to be a father. That's not what I mean. You're you're a little too butter on too much toast, you know? Hey. What? You're spreading yourself too thin. Jesus Christ, get the goddamn metaphor. Life needs balance. It's great that you care this much about your kids, but you can't neglect your own needs because you're too busy taking care of everyone else's. You matter, too. I just, I know I can provide for my family. If I take a step back and look at everything objectively, I know I'm doing right by them. I don't know. But I can't explain it, man. There's always that voice in the back of my head telling me that I need to do more. It's like it's never enough for me. Every time I relax, that voice keeps telling me I don't deserve it. To be honest, to even feel guilty about being out here. Dude, that is way, way too freaking uh, close. Like, honestly, that is... um super how I feel all the goddamn time. Every moment of every day. Craig, you're trying your best and doing an amazing job. That's a fact. But even if you weren't, you would still deserve happiness. I don't know. Do I, though? Whoa, this is getting real deep. Hell yeah, bro. Eggplant! I look at Craig and think about what a good friend and even better father he is. He's compassionate, he's hardworking, he's relentlessly positive. Encourages everyone to be the best version of themselves. He makes me want to be a better person. If you could only see yourself the way I see you. Oh. Craig beams. He gets up and walks over to his supplies. Mm. Come on, I brought dessert. Oh, are you going to use the campfire to torch the tops of some creme brulee? Oh. What? I know little to nothing about cooking. Craig pulls out marshmallows. Hey. Well, you still know how to make s'mores, right? I think the more important question is, do you know how to make s'mores? As I recall, you just completely blacken the marshmallows. Oh. oh, I stand by that. It's charred on the outside of gooey, gooey center is preserved. Brutish! Craig throws a marshmallow at me and I catch it in my mouth. Oh. Pro move. We used to be able to do that at great distance against the wind disadvantage. Give me a week in, of practice and I'll be competitive again. Craig and I sit in the warm glow of the campfire watching embers float up towards the sky. The stars are so much brighter out here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I miss this, Jay. Me too. We stay here until it gets late, half remembering stories from college. Watch the fire dies and eventually clamber into the tent. Is this where I only packed one sleeping bag? I crawl into the tent and I unfurl my sleeping bag. Hmm. Wait, there's where's the other sleeping bag? Oh, I did! Oh, that's creepy. Look around for the second. Oh. Oh no! I must have left it at home! This is completely accidental! It's all yours, dude. I'm sorry. I'll just... 
Curl up over here. Hmm. No way. Here. Craig unzips the sleeping bag and spreads it out so there's enough room for both of us to lay on top of it. Mm -hmm. Night, bro. Good night, bro. I roll over and we face away from each other. Without a blanket, it's really cold. I shiver and without realizing, I find myself nestling closer to Craig. I'm sure he won't mind. He turns over and I can feel his breath on my neck. It's hard to focus on anything else. I turn over, trying to get more comfortable. Open my eyes and find Craig's face only a few inches from my own. For once, he looks at peace. His eyes flutter open. His hand finds its place finds a place on my waist. Not sure who leans in first, but suddenly we're kissing. We look at each other again. My heart is racing. Craig! Craig! Oh. I got strong feelings for you, bro. Feelings I can't deny anymore. Um Bro! Me too! Yeah, that's exactly what guys want anyone wants to hear. I have strong feelings for you. Me too! I run my hands through his hair, then down his chest. Craig brings me closer, wrapping his arms around me. I feel so secure. Uh -huh. You know, talking about old times is fun, but oh. I like making new memories with you. I smile, tracing the lines of his hip with my finger. We kiss again. I'm not worried about us getting too cold tonight. Ah! Is that the end? Date complete! Oh shit! How do we do? How did we do? S rank! Performance for sure. Excellent, excellent. Keg stand champion. Achievement unlocked. Pay your bills early, kids. Okay, what's going on? What's going on now? Ooh, I think I finally have everything set up. Amanda should be here any minute now. I think that's her car in the driveway. Okay, got act natural. Okay, we got this. I don't know what's going on, but we're gonna act natural. Be cool, Jay. Be cool. I'm always cool. Always fucking cool. Amanda walks through the door with a suspicious look on her face. Hey, Dad. Off to a good start. Hmm. Something fishy? Brats. I'm sorry, but the sweetie, that's the feds. The life of crime is finally catching up to you. I tried to send them off in a different direction, but I'm no match for the power and funding of the U.S. government. Dad. Well, if they think they're going to take me alive, they got another thing coming. I'm kidding. You're right. I have a little surprise for you. Aww. Yeah, I can tell. You're very bad at lying. Amanda, my dear, would you care to join me in the kitchen? <laughs> Father, it would be, it would fill my heart with glee. I lead Amanda over to the kitchen table with a present where a present lies covered under a tablecloth. It's nothing special, but I wanted to get you something, a little something. You graduated high school last week, and I know you told me not to make a big deal about it, but... Aw, oh, Dad, you... I dramatically whip the tablecloth off the table, and his jaw drops. No way! I figure you probably won't be able to get cable in your dorm, so I thought it'd be nice to take a piece of home with you. DVD box set of long-haul paranormal ice tr ice road ice truckers. This is all 19 seasons. Jesus Christ, that must have been expensive. And bonus material, including commentary with actual ghosts featured on the show. Dad, I love this. Thank you. She gives me a big hug. I'm glad you like it. Hey, you want to hang out with me in the backyard for a bit? Toss the old pigskin or something? <laughs> totally. Follow Amanda to the back door. Oh. <clears throat> hey, it looks like we've invited all of our friends. You told me not to make a big deal, but you seem to have forgotten about my entire mission in life is to make a big deal about your accomplishments. So I invited all the guys I was going to bang. So consider this your graduation party with all of my friends. Surprise! Dad, everyone's here. Well, yeah, everyone wanted to come and support you because you're amazing. Is that a mac and cheese bar? Sure is, fully customizable, down to the type of Mac. And there's an ice cream cake, the good kind with the crunchies in the middle. I I don't know what to say. Don't say anything, just go have fun with your pals, all right? I'm gonna have fun with my pals. I'm so proud of you, Amanda. Amanda smiles and runs to her friends. I should make the rounds and make sure everyone's having a good time. At first, Mac and cheese. Jay! Jay, my dude! 
Pablo, how's the shirt business going? My bun, I've got men's shirts, I've got women's shirts, I've got tank tops and variety of sizes, shapes, and colors. Each one of them is fine quality screen printed with the logo and visage of world-renowned witch house outfit, Vanked Vale. Purchasable at most respectable retailers, but more specifically, out of the trunk of my car. I'm also selling my mom's world-famous homemade apple butter. Never stop hustling, Pablo. Never stop hustling. Baby, you, baby, you got it. Jay! Brian! Brian! You made it! Uh -huh. Ha! I don't pass up on good Mac. What do you think of the party? Uh -huh. It's not bad. Just not bad? Uh -huh. Yeah, it's not bad. Don't let him bait you. Don't let him bait you. Thank you! For the lovely compliment! Sure thing, pal. Say, let me know if you ever want to head out a little late. Be happy to pull you out of the drink again. Deep breaths. Deep breaths. Daisy trots up. Hi, Amanda's dad. Hey, Brian's daughter. See? See how that feels? This is a really great party. Thanks so much for inviting us. You're very welcome, tiny child who knows how to pay a compliment. Brian. Brian and I lock eyes. This isn't over. Joseph, it looks like you've settled into this neighborhood quite nicely. Yep, couldn't ask for a better cul-de-sac. Well, I'm glad. Hopefully we'll see you at more church events. We've got a big schedule planned for the rest of the year. Sure thing, Joseph. And maybe if you aren't doing anything later, we could hang out sometime. Sure, Joseph, that'd be great. Hey, Kiss and Run, what's going on? No, um, Amanda has uh, graduated from uh, high school. You you actually missed um, my final date with Craig. We banged in the woods. Sure, Joseph, that'd be great. Well, see you later. Goodbye. Hugo comes up to me with a plate of mac and cheese. Mm. The perfect cheddar to mac ratio. Beautiful work, Jay. Thanks, Hugo. You know, I'm really pleased to see Amanda going toward dream school. I'm glad she turned it around for finals. Me too, that scholarship money will really help. Amanda walks by and pretends not to see Hugo. Amanda, come say hi to your old teacher. Hey, congratulations on graduating. I know you're going to do great things at art school. Pew pew, pew pew. Okay. And it starts back away. Wait, I just realized that you're not my teacher anymore, so I don't have to be afraid of talking to you. You no longer hold any... You have no power over me. Hey. You're right. Go forth, adult. I can no longer give you detention. Yeah, I'm going to break anything I want. There's nothing you can do about it, bitch. Are you still mad about that time I gave you detention for breaking my globe? <laughs> nope. Yes. And I'll have you know that the globe didn't even fit in the basketball hoop in the first place. So, fuck it. She'll fit into college just fine. Hey. Hey. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, this is awkward. Robert just cheers vaguely to the snack table. Good stuff. Yep. <sighs> this is awkward. See you later. Hey. Hey, man. Matt! Let me know when Amanda leaves for college. I'll have a fresh basket. Banana bread Kennedy's ready for her. Thank you. I know she'll love that. Have you gotten that oregano smell out of your upholstery yet? <laughs> Still working on it, baby. <sighs> With the splendid green... Par garden party. My deepest thanks for extending an invitation to my son and I. The Oxbar icebox cake is divine. Yeah, thanks, dude. Good cake. Sir Lucian, he knows. I know. But I am a man of my word. The story of my oregano betrayal will go unsung. Thanks for coming by! Hey, looks like Amanda's hanging out with Briar and Hazel. Let's see what they're up to. Okay, Briar, think of a shape. Hazel, what's she thinking? Square. Briar? Mm, star. Oh, no psychic twins. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, Kiss and Run, uh, best part, missed me. Uh, only Robert looks disappointed you ended up with Craig. Yeah, Robert's a bit of a jerk. Um, I think that's fair, fair enough. We'll get it next time. Soon we will develop your psychic powers, children. And close to Briar and Hazel, lowering her voice. Listen, you guys can be real with me. If you're downplaying your psychic abilities, I want you to know that you can trust me. Heck, even think of me as the third twin. Amanda, that's a triplet. 
You know, Dad, by the time I'm done with these kids, we're going to be finishing each other's... Don't say sentences. Say sandwiches. Say sandwiches. What? Didn't finish your sentence. Are we going to be finishing each other's... Sentences! See? Third twin. I have to go. This is weird. As party starts to wind down, I take a seat on our back porch step. Amanda wanders over and sits down next to me. Killer party, Pops. What can I say? I was inspired. So, I, uh, I also have something for you. Oh, God. For me? Why? Not to be completely genuine about my feelings for once or anything, but growing up wasn't easy. It could have been a lot harder if it wasn't. Oh, Jesus Christ. Game, don't make me feel. Dad, you've always been there for me through everything. And there's, there's been times in my life when you're my only friend. Hmm. I was really scared of going to college and being so far away from you. But I realized that everything you've done for me is to prepare me for this. And I'm ready. I wouldn't be who I am today without you. Don't cry, don't cry. I swear to God, Jay, if you cry again. You're the best, Dad. I love you. Oh! And I'm crying. I'm crying. Anyway, that was enough emotional vulnerability for one day. <laughs> Present time. Amanda hands me a tiny wrap package. I tear the wrapping off to find a frame picture of me and Amanda. Oh, Jesus Christ, game. What are you doing to me? It's us. Uh, Amanda didn't seem like she ended up with anyone kissing Ron. Uh, I think I've raised my little girl to be quite uh, the prude. Kind of shocking how all of our photo albums just are just pictures of me, huh? I figured we need at least one of us together before I leave. Amanda, thank you. Watching you grow up has been the happiest experience of my life. You're such a talented, intelligent young woman, and I'm so excited to see what the future holds for you. <laughs> Actually, yeah, this is really emotional and well done. Knock like I'm dead, kid. Always do. Huh. Amanda and I share a hug. This is only the beginning, Pops. Plenty more memories for us down the road. Memories to make and stuff to break, right? Ugh. Okay, I'm going to break some stuff. I'm the world's best dad! That's the achievement, Steve achievement I just got. It would be an honor. Hell, you know, I started some fires in my day. And it hops up. Looks like someone's been waiting to talk to you. Oh, is this going to be Craig? I hope it is, because I've got to go in a few minutes. Climbs over to the back of the yard. Craig is sitting on a bench beneath our cherry blossom tree. He smiles at me. I'll leave you to it. Me and the Emmas are going to go get ice cream. Pew pew! Pew pew! I'm glad that she patched it up with her friends, at least. I take a seat next to credit as the last guests make their way out of the party. Bro. Bro! Mm -hmm. Which reminds me of the parties we used to throw. Fewer keg stands, of course. Probably for the best. I don't want to get my hip replaced after a party trick goes wrong. Oh. We can leave the keg stands in the past. Oh. I, uh... Talking this, week, this weekend to relax. Taking this weekend to relax. This party was my first stop. At the express train from relaxation station. Next stop, Napville. Pull into the J Concourse. You know the J Concourse. I'd like to book a ticket into Napville as well. Mm. I'll have. I might have to meet you halfway at eating food directly off your own stomach, town. They both giggle, but man, I just want to pour some chips on my belly while I hang out in the hammock, or eat them off of his belly. Jesus Christ, his abs. Craig, I'm glad you're making time for yourself. Uh. Me too. Hmm. Stress is a funny thing, dude. I didn't realize how overworked I was until we got away from the city. It's honestly as destructive as binge drinking every night and eating burritos off the floor. I guess we need to get out of the city more often then. Hmm. Craig kicks his legs over the side of the bench and leans onto me, lying down on my lap. I rub my fingers through his hair. Oh, you're looking for balance. I admire that. And I've got nothing but time because my daughter is away and I apparently don't work. I got a text message. Oh. It's uh, a process. Sorry, I'm texting my wife. Hmm. It's going to take me some time to figure it out. I might need your help, bro. And Craig, I'll be your bro till the day I die. And if being your bro means forcing you to take care of yourself, then I'll be happy to oblige. Mm -hmm. Craig looks at me, smiling. Bro, mm. that means so much to me. Craig sits up and pulls me into a kiss. Oh, we're together now. We've made it. Looks like we made it. <laughs> we both laugh. Oh. You and me, we're going to be all right. 
Hell yeah! And that, I think, guys, is going to be the end of our Dream Daddy experience. I hope you guys have had a great time. I hope everybody who's watched has had a lot of fun. Remember, you can catch me streaming a new game tomorrow. Um, follow me on Twitter, because I'm going to be putting up a poll uh, tomorrow. Uh, that was fucking adorable, Kiss and Run. Um, but I'm going to be putting up a poll tomorrow on Twitter of what I'm going to play tomorrow. Um, it's going to be more questionable content. Um, but uh, basically, you guys get to choose what my next game in this future is going to be. Uh, until then, um, this has been Trent from Special Stream Cannon. Having a lot of fun, and I will see you guys later. Bye!